Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to building an automatic battery cutoff circuit to prevent over discharge of your rechargeable batteries and this will be part two in a series of two. Before I get started I'll just mention that the PCB board you'll see in this design came from PCB Way, where I get all my PCB boards and also check out Forstronics.com for information on Forstronics services and if you like this video please hit the thumbs up and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get started. As a reminder, why are we building this circuit? Well, actually, it's actually really hard without having a manual cutoff switch to prevent a rechargeable battery from over discharge. You need a way to sense when the battery gets low and then to cut off or disconnect the circuit of the battery, which is hard because often in these cases, the battery is powering the design or the circuit. So how do we do that? So that's what we addressed in this video series and we talked about it in detail in part one. This circuit could be used for various types of rechargeable battery chemistries. And in part two, we're gonna verify our design and just talk about a little bit about the circuit, where the current's going, and a little bit about the parts in the circuit. So let's start by reviewing the circuit or our design for the battery cutoff. Okay, we're looking at Eagle CAD and we're looking at the schematic of the circuit. As a reminder, VDD is our battery voltage or battery power. VCC is our load and also could be our power supply. As I mentioned, you may have a design that's just using battery power. I had a design that uses uh, power from another source and then when that power is lost, the battery kicks in. So as I mentioned, this diode may only be needed if you if you have another power source. But anyway, let's pretend our load's out here. Let's pretend this is the battery. As a reminder, this is our voltage detector. It's one of the circuits that helps us really accomplish this. And it does so by monitoring VDD. And once it reaches a threshold, you know, and that's set by the um, voltage detector, and you can find out about it in this data sheet. And as I mentioned, this one that I use, and I'll show the part number at the end, has various options for different voltage thresholds. What happens is the out pin gets pulled high by a large resistor, and this is one of the areas where current can flow, so we wanted to choose a large re resistor. I'm gonna use 4.7 meg, and then this pulls it up and makes it high, and this line con is connected to the gate of this end channel MOSFET. When this is high, this is on, so it acts like a short to ground, which turns on this P-channel MOSFET, and so current can flow from the battery. But once the threshold, the low threshold is tripped, out becomes low, an active low, turns this off, this acts as an open, this gets pulled high by this pull-up resistor, and shuts off the P-channel MOSFET essentially shutting off or cutting the battery out of the circuit. Now there will be a small amount of current that flows and uh, we talked about that in part one. And then these uh, capacitors are for hysteresis. So it puts a delay before the on or off to prevent oscillation if, if, the, thresh, if the value of the battery is right near the threshold. All right, let's look at a video demonstrating our circuit. So I got the circuit, I got the parts, I got the PCB, I build it up and I'm doing some testing. So I'll, I'll show you the results. Okay, here we're looking at my circuit that I put together. I'll talk about it once I start the video. Once again, I got this um, PCB from PCB Way where I get all my PCB boards. And, you know, as you'll see, some of these parts look a little jumbled. That's because I popped off some resistors and I changed out some VAT values, trying to make sure it works and trying to optimize for the lowest current drain. And another thing I'll mention is, this has more than just the cutoff circuit. I actually have my charging circuit on here as well, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'm just gonna talk about the charging circuit and demonstrate that. Okay, so we do a close up of the circuit. I'll pause it again. This is my P-channel MOSFET, and I picked this one out because it has a low on resistance. Here, R2 is my 4.7 meg pull-up. This is the out that's going to turn on or off this P-channel MOSFET. As you can see, here's one of my resistors I was messing around with. And then this is, this is gonna be the load, and this is the other power source, but this is not gonna be on for the purposes of this video. 
So let's start it again. So I'm showing the load. This is just some resistors, high powered resistors. I think it's about 27 ohms or something. I, for, I forget the exact value. And then this is my battery connector because I'm using a nickel metal hydride nine volt battery. And right now I just have these clips that are gonna go to, to my power supply, which we'll see. And here's my power supply. Now this is actually a very uh, nice power supply. I've showed this in other videos, but what I'm about to do is I'm about to turn it on and it's set for 9.7 volts. So that's simulating my fully charged battery. I have this much current flowing to the load. So this is simulating the battery being on and power going to the load. I just go back to the circuit, but there's not much to see here. Now I'm gonna use that knob to lower the voltage. And so I'm simulating the battery discharging over time. So now I'm down to about seven, 7.3. I'm gonna keep lowering it. And then I'm just gonna stop it right there. Now keep an eye on the current. So right now we're at about, because I'm lowering the voltage and I have a static load, we're at about 2.7, 270 milliamps. We're gonna see this all of a sudden drop once we get lower. So here we go, there it goes. And so right now we're at just about at seven volts. We're not quite there, but we're pretty close. And we can see that the voltage detector, the out of the voltage detector was pulled low. And so now we're only getting 2.4 microamps. So we're no longer getting 200 some milliamps. We're getting 2.4 microamps. Our cutoff circuit has now officially cut off. So I go even lower. Now what I'm gonna do soon is I'm gonna raise the voltage back up. So just pay attention. So I'm raising it back up. We can see it going. Now one thing to note is notice that I get higher than it was when I cut it off. This, I, I looked for documentation in, in the data sheet and didn't really talk about this much. But it, this makes sense and it doesn't really bother my circuit that it doesn't cut right back on. I think this is just how the voltage detector works. It also could be related to the fact that we have such a high pull-up resistor. So maybe it takes time for the parasitic capacitance of that gate to charge back up and for it to actually turn the, turn the voltage detector back off or on. I'm pulling the voltage up more and more. We're gonna to get to about 2.3 and there you, there you see it turned back on. So now all of a sudden the P-channel MOSFET's turning back on, I'm, I'm just putting the voltage up and we have current flowing back to our load. And I touch it there because it's getting a little hot, getting a little warm. All right, so that is the circuit. Let's talk about, we saw about 2.4 microamps. Let's talk about where that current's going and, and why we have to be mindful of the components we're using. Okay. So where is the 2.4 microamps of current going? Remember, this is the rough block diagram of the voltage detector. I should not say rough, simplified block diagram. But remember, this is the out, and we have a pull-up resistor here, the 4.7 meg. And you know, you can try a little bit higher if you want to go higher. You just have to make sure that this is getting enough current to actually pull up. So 4.7 worked fine for me. I could have tested higher, I didn't, so I'll leave that up to you. But basically what happens is, is when this is driven off, I should, actually I'm speaking wrong. When this is driven on, and I talked about this in part one, this acts like a short connecting it to ground. And so you have this path through the 4.7 meg resistor to ground. So we can do some math there. If, at, if we're at about seven volts of the battery, across that 4.7 meg ohm resistor, then we're gonna get about 1.49 microamps. So that's gonna happen no matter what because we do need that pull-up resistor there. Once again, if you can bring the value higher, you're gonna lower this value. So where's some of the other current coming from? Well, if you look at the voltage detectors data sheet, it basically says about 600 nanoamps to operate it. I'm calling it leakage, that probably is not Correct. It is leakage, but it's also to operate it. So in this simplified block diagram, notice we have an op amp. 
Well, that does require some current. Of course, they optimized it to be very low, but that needs current to be on. And then also you have this voltage divider circuit, right? And this is going to have a path to ground. Now, they are going to pick these resistors so they're very high, but still, you're going to have some current leakage. And I'm sure there's other areas where the current's being consumed, but the whole point of the design is to make this number as low as possible. Okay, so they call this a typical value, and you never know what that means. I mean, it typically is, a lot of times it can be lower than that, uh, but they're just saying that it's going to be around that, but they're not necessarily guaranteeing what it will be. So it could actually be higher than that, technically. Then, but that doesn't quite get us up to 2.4 microamps, but you also have to be mindful of the other components you're using. So this is, this is the P-channel MOSFET that we have to shut off. This is the N-channel MOSFET that we use to create a open or short to ground. Well, we have this pull-up resistor and it's a high value, but if you look on the data sheet of this N-channel MOSFET and it's a BSS-138, which is a real common general purpose one, you have to, it has a spec where it says, okay, if there's zero gate voltage, and what they mean is zero voltage difference between gate to source, there is a little bit of current that flows. And so they give the, the spec that if you have about 50 volts across the drain to source, it's going to be about 500 nanoamps. We, of course, don't have that, but we have about 7 volts, but we don't know, you know, what does that mean? Does that mean it's going to be much lower than 500 nanoamps? But anyway, there's going to be some current flowing here. But the point of me showing you this is be mindful of these specs because this 500 nanoamps, you can find MOSFETs that have higher values. So all in all, you know, if we add up this typical value, whatever this would be, probably a little below 500 nanoamps and this, that's why we're getting about 2.4 microamps. And there might be some areas of other areas of slight leakage. Now, I could make this resistor higher, but you're still going to get some of that current flowing and you need this resistor at a certain level to pull this up. One other thing I'll mention is you may connect a charging circuit to this, right? So there could be a path for a little bit of current to flow in the charging circuit too. So that can up this value. And the reason I say that is because I have a charging circuit. I'm not going over it. But when I add my charging circuit with my, I have a jumper that I removed it. But when I add my charging circuit, this, not this, this value goes up another couple microamps. Now, once again, this, that means it's not an ideal cutoff circuit, but we showed an example in part one that, you know, as long as your battery has, I don't know, let's say 500 milliamp hours left, if you're only using 2.4 microamps, you know, it's going to be over a year before that battery gets to a critical level of discharge. So that's the value of this circuit. Here's the bomb. I'll let you pause it, but I already went over it. And that's going to be it for part two. I had some great comments on part one. So if there's any other questions or anybody want to add things for part two, use the comment section. And if you like what you see here, hit the thumbs up and thank you for watching.